which we said they had to have over the Eagles 11. With the Eagles rushing game, they have to go back and run the football. Season-long return for Philadelphia and Charlie Garner. Best starting position of the day from the 48. Garner's in the backfield, and Charlie Garner rockets up the middle and gets a quick gain of eight, slashing his way to the 43. For some reason, they got away from that running game, and you got to remember, they're going against a defense that's not real good against the rush, and they sort of drifted away from it. Maybe with the four wide outs in the new formations, you got to go back and do what you do best, and if you're an Eagle fan, you want to see the Eagles run the football. Second out of two. Garner again, out of block, has to get inside the 42. That'll be very close as William Gaines shut the door for the Redskin defense. They're back now with the two tight ends and the two wide. They're back running the formations, which is giving them those wins. A couple weeks ago against Denver, they fooled the Broncos defensively by running the same play, but out of different formations. And then we had that game uh, uh, where they came out and played those four wideouts and four wideouts and, and uh, really unsettled uh, the team for a while, but they went back to their base. So far, they haven't got back to their base offense. And they'll be short of the first down by a little bit more than the nose of the football here, just nice seconds into the third quarter. Nice signal there by Ray. Did you see how he held the finger and the thumb up? <laughs> He, he, he sort of gave you two inches, I'd say, that was, Red. They'll bring Saxon in and take Garner out, joining Waters. Saxon, the former chief in Miami Dolphin, is about 25 pounds heavier. So as a blocking fullback, he's got some muscle to shoot up the middle. And the coach said he likes him going up there, that he can scatter the big guy. Third and less than a yard. Give it to Saxon. And the submarines near the 42. It'll be close. Depending on the spot, the middle of that line getting a hand on James Saxon. He had such a short distance. Although the, 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 uh, the Redskins are celebrating, everybody thinks they won this. Nottage was in there, 92. Ray Rhodes, five championship rings with San Francisco and the fourth choice of owner Jeffrey Lurie to take over and maybe the best of all the group they were looking at. Dick Vermeil, Jimmy Johnson. They were looking at Jimmy Johnson. Yes. I thought he was playing tight end. Uh, not that Jimmy Johnson. Oh, the other Jimmy. Yes. <laughs> the one that gets to work with James Brown. Yes. Our buddy. And short again. It's more short. But they went backwards on that one. Ray Rhodes going to go for it. Would you? No. You'd punt? I'd punt. And that's why I'm here. And he's down there up for coach of the year. Fourth down in the length of the football. On the opening drive of the second half, Waters will be by himself in the backfield. Double tight ends, West and Jimmy Johnson. Rodney Pete takes it, and he should have enough for a first down as he got inside the 42-yard line. Good surge, and he is a good sneak quarterback. Some elongated quarterbacks don't run the sneak real good. You're real tall, 6'5". I see those guys. It looks like a gooseneck going up to them. And he's only at 85% today. And there's Ron Lynn, the defensive coordinator for the Redskins. And he's been doing a good job in trying to piece this thing back together. And he's getting help today because the offense for his team is running the ball, not leaving his guys hang out there. And he's tired. And cold. <laughs> There's Red. He's real good friends with Pete. <laughs> Said, I talked to your dad yesterday. Or last week I had the Chicago game. He didn't holler first down like you do. Well, Red didn't holler. You might. But they do get the first down, and the Eagles take the opening kickoff of the second half inside the 42-yard line. And Norb Turner hoping that his defense continues to play as well as it played in the second quarter against Philadelphia, which basically shut them down. They got a lot of pressure on Pete. Here's a first down and 10 with Garner in the backfield and Waters on the move. 
is knocked down by Tim Johnson. Great penetration. So he's belted back, and we're going to go back to Hollywood for this McDonald's game break. And let's go to James Brown. All right, Kevin, Packers virtually undefeated at home, 14-1. Yes, indeed, and Dorsey Levins takes it across, capping the drive for the Packers, who lead it 21-10. And let's we'll take it back to Kevin and Jerry. Dorsey Levins, who began at Notre Dame, transferred to Georgia Tech, and has been kind of waiting in the wings up in Green Bay, and they're using him a lot more this year. And Mike Holmgren offense, they got a nice lead. The Packers do over Tampa Bay at the half. Here's second down and 12, just inside the 45. Almost picked off, incomplete. Knocked down by Rod Stevens, the former Seattle Seahawks. A pass intended for former Packer, Ed West. Watch the motion's going to go past the tight end. Here's the tight end, and the linebacker's got to take the inside cuts of Y. Jump it, jump it. There, oh, nice swap with his right hand, Rod Stevens. Y is the tight end, so he'll be coached. You go to the inside cut of Y. Rodney Pete today. Third down and 12. They're coming at him again, and it's picked off this time, intercepted by Daryl Pounds. The rookie has his first career interception and then it's fumbled away and the Eagles get it back and Fred Barnett cradles it. And that gives him a first and ten for the Eagles. Good pressure on the quarterback. Boy, Pounds has got good speed. He's just got to hang on the ball. Watch the pressure on Rodney Peake. Boom! Hits him right from the side. Ken Harvey. Now 31 is impressive with his speed. He can accelerate and run. But you're not in college. You don't run down the middle of the field. When you intercept, you go to the sideline like a punt return. Look where he is. He's between the hashes. And the, qu the quarterback knocked it free. And see, everybody comes from all sides. When you intercept in pro football, you go to the sideline. That counts as a possession. So the 42 yard line, back it goes. First and 10 and Ricky Waters. Tumbles he's a guy, to the he's a 47 yard line. Dexter Nottage was making the stop. And I love the umpire. Did you hear him how Easy guy, easy guys. Quit hitting them. Well, the way the Redskins are, you got to keep hitting them. You got to gang tackle them. Now, they can't let their spirit get down because they lost the interception, Kevin. They got to still rear up on their hind legs and kick. Ricky Waters, fourth in NFC rushing, fourth in NFL total yards. Great third down back. We haven't seen much today, but his blocking game is what he's taken a lot of pride in. He says he's blocking better now than ever before. Six and he gets some blocking and goes head first into the Redskins and out to the 50-yard line before he is brought down by Marcus Patton and Rich Owens, the rookie. Now they're back to two tights, two wideouts, which means Guy McIntyre, the guard, will lead the play. They're back to their basic formations. They're not trying to trick the Redskins. They're running at them, and that's what they have to look at them, knock the Redskins around. Eagles came into today, 7-4, and, and Ray Rhodes says that seven-win mark is just a tease right now. It's not, it's not anything for this team. It has no meaning at all unless we win today against the Redskins. Third down, short, Pete, and a fumble, and it's recovered by the center and the former Redskin, Raleigh McKenzie. It was like, it was like a horse galloping to the loose ball. There's they, McKenzie. They got to punt it. You got to be proud of both teams. This is a this is a fight. They swat that ball out of there, and Reggie jumped on it like a wild horse. Hutton booms it high. Mitchell from the 12-yard line. We'll give it to Washington for the first time in the second half. Five minutes gone in the third quarter. Not a replay. Too many men on the field for the Eagles. They had to punt again, and now the ball is up to the 18-yard line. That's a 36-yard punt and a better advantage for the Redskins. Schuler and the offense of North Turner will get it for the first time in the second half. Nice view of the National Gallery here in Washington, D.C. And right now they've got a current exhibit from Winslow Homer. He was a famous American painter in the 19th century and many... Great things to see for families and individuals alike here in the nation's capital on a 
sunny day as you see Terry Allen. The sun has been shining on him. He's carried the ball well today for the Redskins. He has 14. We say for the Redskins to win, his total has to be more than Waters and Garner's total, and then the Redskins can win this football game. Gus Ferrat taken out last week because of ineffective play, and they know what he can do. He is the fan favorite. They booed lustily last week against Seattle when Heath Schuler was brought in the game. In fact, Gus was so mad about his second interception last week, that Jerry, he took his helmet and threw it against the bench, and he bent the face mask, which he's holding on to right there, and he had to go back in and hold for an extra point later in the game, and the helmet was all screwed up. <laughs> First down and 10 from the 20. There's Terry Allen, bulldozing his way for four, and he's out to the 24-yard line before Zordich got a hand on him, and also Gavea on the defense for the number three defense in the NFL, the Philadelphia Eagles. And the Redskins are controlling the tempo with the run on first down. With this much yardage they've gained, they can run again on second down. Second down and six for Heath Shuler, who has not thrown an interception today. Shuler. Truitt was double teamed and jousting with them was Jackson 47 incomplete pass and this is a tough throw this is a slim post corner he'll start he'll start inside this is a long throw because the ball's on the hash all the way away from him and he breaks for the out there's the car salesman being double what if he got double teamed when he was trying to sell those geos <laughs> <laughs> Wonder how many he sold. Said he was doing good, but what's amazing is the dealership sold eight, eight cars after he left that he started the deal on. He needs a commission on those eight cents. <laughs> Third down and six for Heath Schuler. And down he goes. Sacked right there by Daniel Stubbs. Third sack today by the Philadelphia defense after sacking the Giants eight times last week at the vet. And that's the problem. If you're going to go throw, Stubbs is a mismatch against a rookie. Joe Patton, he has two chances, slim and none. As he comes right through the inside, turns him around. Joe Patton, this is his first year. He, you know, he shouldn't be starting yet. Not against Daniel Stubbs, who, you know, didn't even play last year. He took a year off, but can still push the court. Turk with a punt. Fair catch, Rob Carpenter. It's going to give the Eagles good field possession on their second possession of the second half. 37-yard punt. Eagles holding on to a 6-0 lead. New Eagle quarterback Randall Cunningham, like last week against the Giants at Veterans Stadium, has come in. Rodney Pete is out of the game, and we thought Cunningham looked very good last week in relief of Pete. And in the pregame warm-up, my assignment, I studied and watched Cunningham in the pregame warm-up, and he was throwing the ball better than anybody was in the pregame warm-up. We'll find out why they made the quarterback change after this from Pam Oliver. First down and 10 for Randall Cunningham. Oh, nobody's open. Cunningham, this is what he does so well. He offers a line of about four yards when he should have been sacked back behind the 40. Rod Stevens finally got a hold of him. And for the story of Cunningham and Pete, let's go downstairs to Pam Oliver. Well, why Rodney Pete has been taken out of, the, out of this game is a bit of a mystery. What the Eagles are telling us, it is a coach's decision. Now, that probably has something to do with that injury of his. He's been having to scramble quite a bit, and that's the last thing they wanted. If you want a scrambling quarterback, who other than Randall Cunningham for that? Back to you. All right, then I want to ask one more question here. Second down and six from the 44, Ricky Waters. Has to weave his way and picks up a couple yards. It'll bring up third and three. Pam, do you see Pete down there hobbling it all with that, that hip flexor? Uh, actually, I am on the wrong side of the field at the moment. Um, no, actually, I don't, guys. I'm going to have to switch sides. All right. We'll try to get an update on that, too. But coach's decision so far, that's why Rodney Pete, every game we've done, the Eagles, they've taken him out and put in Cunningham. Well, I, I don't know. They could be mad when he threw that interception, that the ball came back to him. And, but... Uh, Anyway, this guy threw good last week. Cunningham threw good last week and threw excellent in the pregame warm-up and threw terrible there. On a third and three, he can't find West after the fake to Waters, and the Eagles are going to have to punt the ball for a second consecutive time. I, I, that there is just too much. They faked the counter trade, pulled all the linemen, faked that, came back around, looked for the bootleg. 
Man, they're getting too complicated. Sometimes when things aren't going good, 